Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Monday Night Live. Hope you're having a fantastic Monday. We're here tonight to talk about my favourite topic to talk about on Monday Night Live, and that is LinkedIn lead generation. Drop in the comments, let me know how you're feeling and where you're tuning in from tonight. We're going to have got a lot to get through, a lot of content to get through. LinkedIn is one of the few social media platforms out there where you can generate leads without spending spending a donut, spending a dollar. Um, there's lots of ways to generate leads, and if you have come across my content before on YouTube, you'll know that I enjoy talking about LinkedIn marketing. Drop in the chat, guys. Let's see who's here. Wanted to make this interactive as possible. I've got five ways to generate leads on LinkedIn that I want to go through with you tonight on this very special episode of Monday Night Live, ladies and gentlemen. Now, LinkedIn was created many moons ago as a recruitment platform. And there was never intended for it to be used for marketing and sales. And that's what it's evolved into. And so you'll notice that the LinkedIn ads have slowly become better and better. LinkedIn groups have become better and better. Sales Navigator become better and better. We're now at a point where these tools are really useful for you to engage. If you want to get more clients, you want to grow your brand, if you want to use LinkedIn to grow your career, if you want to use LinkedIn for recruitment purposes, this is the only business to business platform that's in the social aspect. Um, you know, compared to Facebook and Instagram, very much those business to consumer type platforms. LinkedIn has definitely got an edge in the B two B world. We're talking 720 million members, ladies and gentlemen, worldwide on LinkedIn. We've got Ian in the house. First one to drop in the chat from Melbourne. Welcome, Ian, this evening. Who else have we got shooting in on LinkedIn, YouTube, and Facebook? Five ways to generate leads on LinkedIn. We're going straight into it, ladies and gentlemen. Here we go. I've got my slides, everything. We've got a lot of value to go through this evening, ladies and gentlemen. Um, Huge opportunity, huge opportunity. Made a ton of money on LinkedIn. I'm gonna go show you exactly how I've, I've done it. But before I do that, for those of you that haven't come across me before, my name is Nathaniel. I run a company called BB Consulting. We've been in LinkedIn marketing for 10 years now. Fortunate enough to win the best use of LinkedIn as social media marketing awards in 2019 and 2020. Um, for our various campaigns that we've been running for clients. Uh, we did a, a tally at the end of 2019 of how much sales we generated for businesses that we worked with, and it equated to four, over $400 million worth of sales that we've generated through our LinkedIn lead generation campaigns um, on LinkedIn. So we've been speciali specializing in that area for some time. We've got David St. St. Martin in the house from SX UK. Welcome, David. All right. And we've got, who else we got here? Hanif Mohammed, welcome. All right, let's get stuck into it. We're giving you a bit of my bonus free gift I'll be giving away at the end of today's session is the LinkedIn Engagement Report 2021. Some interesting statistics in there. Um, we're gonna be covering the three mistakes that you wanna avoid, the biggest mistakes that I see people make on LinkedIn, you wanna avoid those. Know your audience. We're going to talk about the mere exposure effect. We got we got Patrick Farnan in the house as well. Hey Patrick, welcome. We're going to be talking about content that converts, content that turns into dollars, content that turns into sales, how to batch create content, maximize engagement, and also do a profile audit with you. Okay, so this is what's happening in the world at the moment. We've got more choices and less time. And so eventually people are just going to start to ignore stuff. Doesn't mean that the algorithm's dead. You might hear about the LinkedIn algorithm's dead. You can't get organic reach anymore. It's not true. What's happened is that the LinkedIn algorithm's got smarter. And so you've got to be producing better quality content. LinkedIn's algorithm's constantly evolving and its goal is to give the users a good experience. So hey, guess what? If you give the users a good experience, you're going to do well with the LinkedIn algorithm. The days of hacking and transform, uh, trying to trick the algorithm, pretty much numbered. No, not quite over, almost over. Um, when I started my career in marketing almost 20 years ago now, I could hack websites to the top of Google by using these 
backlink strategies and then Google updated algorithms and all the all the um, websites that I got on page one to the top of Google for various keywords were all of a sudden on page 10 of the search results just because Google learned how to give their users a better experience. So I always say align your objective with the platform and you'll do well. And that applies to LinkedIn and LinkedIn's algorithm. And how do you apply, how do you provide good quality uh, content? How do you add value in a way that's engaging? Well, guess what? People interact with things that resonate with them on a personal level. So even though it's a business website, you know, if you're just putting up white papers and, and business content all the time, it's not going to resonate with people on a personal level and, and they're more likely to interact with it if you do. So you have to bring that personalization to your content. And that's what all this, this craze about authenticity uh, that's going around at the moment is all about. It's about resonating with people on a personal level. So, you know, you can overdo this. Sure, it is a business platform, provide ed education, information, entertainment, inspiration in a business context. But if you can add that personalization to it, it'll make you stand out from the crowd. And so how do you do that? Well, you talk about why you, why you do what you do, use the power of storytelling um, and, and resonate with people on a personal level. Talk about the challenges that you've had to overcome. Things like that do really well. And I'll show you a few examples of that. But before I do, I want to talk to you about the biggest mistakes people make. Now, this is why most people go wrong. Because this, like this little chap here, people are generally impatient. And the second reason is impatient. There you go. Hammer that one home. Second reason is people are a little bit selfish. You know, they want to make money today and then it's all about me and I want to make money overnight. And these are the two biggest mistakes. You've got to play the long game. Okay, and, and in order to play a long game, you've got to be focused, you've got to have a plan. Because if you're focused, and what I mean by that is, is planning your content, planning your lead generation, measuring it. If you're doing it on the day, oh, what should I post today? What should I, should I post that's going to resonate with my audience today? You're, you're going to be unfocused and what's going to happen is you're going to waste a lot of time and it's going to be inefficient. You're going to be reactive. You're less in control. You're unsure about the future. There's less breathing room because you're thinking of things as you're doing it. Um, you're flustered, second guessing, pretty much just like surviving. Just because you're on social media doesn't mean you're thriving on social media. And if you're unfocused, that's the sort of results that you can expect. Um, and it's very easy to procrastinate. Who here spends a lot of time in the newsfeed, whether it's LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, YouTube, scrolling through when they should be working. I know I'm guilty of this and this comes from being unfocused. If you're focused and you know what you're going to be spending your time on while you're on the platform, then you're proactive, you're in control, you've got a long-term vision and you're relaxed and calm. You can confidently easily make, mistake, uh, make decisions, which means you know what to say no to. You know, when opportunities come across, you know what to say no to. Do you have a system when somebody sends you a connection request on LinkedIn as to whether you accept that connection request or not? And that's what being focused is all about. And if you're focused, you love taking action because you've got a plan. Okay, now everything I do on social media uh, comes back to something called the mere exposure effect. A little something that I learned from my man Kerwin Ray. If you don't know who Kerwin Ray is, go check out his stuff on YouTube or Instagram or LinkedIn. His content's awesome. One of the best to do social media in Australia, I must say. Had the chance to interview him on my series LinkedIn Heroes uh, three, going back three years ago before the, before the old COVID started. And the mere exposure effect, is what Kerwin taught me, is, is a psychological phenomenon by which people tend to develop a preference for things merely because they are familiar with them. In social psychology, this effect is sometimes called the familiarity principle. What that means is if you're more familiar with a service provider or a product, you're more likely to like them, trust them and want to buy from them. And so... You know, back in 2003, 2004, uh, Kerwin said that we need five exposures before we're familiar enough with a brand to like and trust them and want to do business with them. Whereas these days, it's more like 20 exposures or 25 exposures. We need a lot more exposures exposures because we've got more choices and less time. And what that means is basically like if, if you went and... Uh, drove um, drove your car down the freeway and all things being equal, you saw five Coca-Cola billboards and you didn't see any Pepsi billboards, you're more likely to buy Coca-Cola just because of the familiarity principle, the mere exposure effect. How you doing, Mohammed? Welcome to Monday Night Live. Good to see you here, dudes. Drop in the comments if you haven't already and say hello. 
Um, let us know where you're tuning in from. So the mere exposure effect, how do I get 20 or 25 exposures in front of my target audience so they're more likely to like me, trust me, I'm more familiar with them, they're more likely to do business with me than the next service provider. But you can you can get this wrong because if you bid 20, 25 calls to action in front of somebody or you start selling to somebody 20, 25 times or 20, 25 ads in front of somebody, you're gonna build negative brand sentiment, and you're not going not going to add uh, have a, a a good relationship with them. So it can have a negative effect. So what you want to be doing with this mere exposure effect is thinking, how do I get 20 or 25 exposures in front of my target audience that add value, that give them a little bit of value, so that they're more likely to trust me and like me than the, the next service provider. And this is how I think about content marketing. So we do need a lot of content to be able to get those exposures in front of our audience quickly. Now, fortunately, the algorithms work in our favor because if we're resonating with people on a personal level and they interact with the content, let's say they like the content or comment on the content, the algorithm's gonna learn that that user likes the content we're providing and therefore it's gonna provide them more of our content on the basis that we keep feeding the content to the platform. So there's four ways to add value. The first one is inspiration, and this is my favorite. Hello, John. Hope you're doing well from the Netherlands. I imagine it'd be the morning there. Inspirational posts can be about wins in your business. This particular post that I've got on the screen here is uh, when I hit 10,000 YouTube subscribers, which was, I think it was last year now, um, you know, something I would not normally post about, so, something which, um, you know, I, I saw the opportunity to post about something inspirational, you know, said 10,000 subscribers on YouTube. Um, you know, social media is, isn't about popularity, it's about adding value and that needs to be celebrated. Thank you for all your support. If you can, I don't know if you can see down the bottom, I had 504 likes and 99 comments when I took the screenshot. Um, and it's just an image celebrating the achievement. This is an inspirational post. One thing that all of your audience have in common is they're connected with you. Um, so if you share about your wins, they most likely um, want to support you. Then try and do it in a way that shows some gratitude. You'll notice that I, you know, I'm always saying thank you for your support and things like that. Um, and talk about adding value. And, and inspirational content doesn't have to be about you and your business. Even though there is lots of stories you can be celebrating, whether it's one year in business, or hired a first team member, or you know, got into first office, opened another office, you know, got a client in another country, lots of things you, could, you can make a story around. Um, but you could also be sharing content to do with your clients. You know, I never forget um, one, one client came to me through a agency in Perth, Glide Agency referred me this client. They were doing some Facebook ads for them and we did some LinkedIn lead generation and they wanted to raise a million dollars in three or four weeks it was. And, um, you know, I was a part of that exercise. They had a big marketing engine, engine behind it to crowdfunding. And after uh, the four weeks was over, they had successfully raised a million dollars and um, the particular business owner uh, wanted to have a celebration. So he invited us around to their office for drinks. I took a photo, said, congratulations, we did it. We raised a million bucks. The post went viral. So you can also celebrate your client wins. The interesting one thing about that one is, even though I didn't say, oh, you know, this was attributed to our LinkedIn lead generation efforts, look how great we were. I was just making it all about the client. Well done, you know, we did it as a team. It's great to be a part of this. Um, I got about between 40 and 50 private messages on LinkedIn from businesses that were looking to raise money and wanted me to help them achieve that because they'd seen the success with one of my clients. So, so something that you could think about there, how could you post about your clients celebrating their wins and their successes um, so that it, it will always reflect well on you, whether you say that you were directly involved or not. It's always best just to leave that open to to um, their own imagination. But uh, are you aware of your clients' wins? You need to be speaking to them regularly to be aware of this stuff and then celebrate them. And in this particular instance, I celebrated it more than my clients. You know, my clients weren't particularly active on social media. Sure, they celebrated it with drinks, but I, I took it and celebrated it on LinkedIn and they ended up getting a, a write-up in the West Australian newspaper from that post. So pretty powerful. So it adds value all round to the client, to me, and um, managed to get more businesses involved that I could help. Education, second way you can add value on LinkedIn. So 
that can be uh, ba basically you teaching your audience stuff. You want to be teaching them stuff at the top of the customer journey. So like around the, you know, um, before they necessarily know that they have a uh, need for your service or they know that um, they have the problem that you solve. So you want to be educating people in the broader sense uh, with your organic content on social media. Um, this particular clip, I was just talking about um, how do you measure success on LinkedIn? So you can take these clips, you know, from interviews like this, you could be doing them from live talks, or it could just be face to camera, giving away a tip like uh, I, I am now. This could be literally chopped up into lots of micro content, two to minute videos, where I'm sharing little insights about, you know, different ways that you can uh, use LinkedIn as a tool. Uh, the third way you can add value is through information. So updating, uh, businesses about what's going on in uh, sorry updating customers about what's going on in your business like during COVID I saw a lot of businesses doing this who had to close they were just informing them you know what was going to happen with memberships like if you're a restaurant when are you going to be open what you know so information is a way to add value um, what I do is a uh, for my business is a tactic called newsjacking. Now newsjacking is basically when you come across something in the news that's um, happened in your industry, you become the gatekeeper to your audience to share that news. So like when LinkedIn come out with a new feature, like for example, when they came out with LinkedIn stories in Australia, um, I immediately wrote an article called four ways to grow your brand with LinkedIn stories. Um, and you know, it's a great way for me to share, you know, first of all, the updates, which a lot of my audience wouldn't have heard of. They're not in my industry. You know, my clients are in financial services, accounting, business, business to business. They're not necessarily following all of the LinkedIn features updates. So it's my job to communicate those updates and then to also tell them how they can use those updates to grow their business. Entertainment, great way to add value on LinkedIn. Entertainment is a fantastic way to add value. Um, it's not used uh, merely enough, like um, people watching content on LinkedIn are generally doing so at work. So if you can entertain them, then you're going to stand out from the competition. Uh, if you can combine entertainment with education, you'll do extremely well. If you can make your videos and content somehow entertaining, uh, you will do incredibly well because it'll keep people engaged. I don't know if you can hear the audio of this one. I don't think you can. That's it. This is an example. If you want me to set drop the video in the chat, I will do afterwards. It was a competition that um, uh, people entered to get a personalized LinkedIn video done by Brian Mills from the movie Taken. Um, pretty funny little video, and uh, I'll share that with you in the comments after the um, after the live, if you like. So when it comes to content. You've got to be catering, as I said, to the awareness stage of the customer journey. Here we have a customer journey map. So taking you all the way from awareness to interest to decision and action, you can see that the awareness stage of the customer journey is a lot bigger than the other uh, parts of the funnel there. And that's because more people are going to be in your awareness stage. If you've got 100 connections, you'll probably find that 90 people are in the awareness stage and it just gets smaller. The number gets smaller as you move down the customer journey. Um, so you, the idea is that you cater for the awareness stage of the customer journey in your content. When they come to your LinkedIn profile, that's probably when they're interested and you want to make sure you have the links and the next steps on your LinkedIn profile, communicating directly to your customer on your LinkedIn profile to guide them through to the decision phase and the action phase. Now, in most businesses and B2B, if, you're, if you do your sales over the telephone or on Zoom calls, you want to be booking them into an appointment. So just keep an eye on who's looking at your LinkedIn profile and if you need to reach out to them and make sure you book them in for an appointment. A lot of people miss out on this area and they don't capture a lot of sales from the interest that they just they get from their content that they produce. Now, you want to be making sure that you're growing your network on LinkedIn. A lot of people don't know that the uh, LinkedIn search feature has a lot of filters. So when you go to the search bar at the top of your LinkedIn navigation bar, um, hit enter and you'll be able to narrow down by people and then you'll find all filters underneath there. So you want to get to this all people, people filters 
place on your LinkedIn. And then you can see that you can narrow down by their job title. Um, so you might wanna put in the job title, just for example, let's say you wanna put in CEO in the job title. And then you've got first connections, second connections, and third connections. First connections are people that you're already connected to. Second connections are people that have connections in common with you and then it goes on third connections and so on the people that you probably want to reach out to if you're looking for new prospects are people that are in your second degree network which means that they have mutual connections with you so let's say you put in title ceo then you put in connections second then you might want to narrow it down by locations you can go as close as a city for the sake of this example let's say we chose australia um, and so we've got CEOs, second degree connections in Australia, and then you can go down to industries and narrow it down to an industry as well. So let's say I chose financial services. That, that would bring up all the people that are in my second degree network that have the job title CEO that are in Australia, that are in the industry financial services. And then what you wanna do is start connect, connecting with those people. Um, just bear with me a second. I just want to talk brief, briefly about the connection request. So the idea is that you want to personalize that connection request. So you might want to say something like, hey, you know, I've noticed that you're in Australia in the financial services industry. I'd love to learn more about your business. Let's connect. And then as you add people into your network, you'll find that the people that are viewing your content are more targeted. But the wrong thing to do is be reactive and just hop on there and just accept you know, whoever sends you a connection request because what you're going to end up with is a lot of connections that are salespeople and recruiters. Who's going to send you connection requests? Salespeople and recruiters. You want to be proactive about who you invite into your network and I suggest niching down on a couple of industries and inviting the key decision makers, whether it's CEOs, procurement managers, HR directors, sales managers, whoever makes the decisions to engage your business, your brand. All right, now, talk about content creation. Um, I, when I first started creating content, I wanted my content to be professional. I was looking at getting clients like, you know, Westpac and Apple and international brands, Channel 7, um, to work with me and they managed to do so successfully. But one of the reasons I did that is because the content, the video content I was creating was professionally produced. The cheapest video I could find when I first started was $5,000. And you'll notice that I have a What We Do uh, video on my on my homepage at bbconsultinggroup.com.au and that's that video, five grand. But if you wanna be posting two or three videos a week, which I recommend you do, um, you can't be costing you five grand every time. It's just gonna become too expensive. So I hopped on the Airtasker and the cheapest video I could find was uh, $500, no experience, but this video producer had no experience. Um, and we started working together. But ever since I started doing this, I've been thinking this is too expensive. I need to find a way to create more content that's better quality for less cost. And I've managed to do that with my behind the brand service. If you're interested in, in us creating the content for you using the behind the brand service, it works out to be about $140 a video um, but professionally done. We do batch creation. So we create like 20 videos just from a 45 minute interview with our clients. And what we found is the results have been fantastic. We're getting between one to 5,000 views on videos with on content um, on profiles that hasn't been getting any engagement before. No likes, no comments, only a few hundred connections and we're getting two or 3,000 people to view that video straight off the bat. Really proud of this service. So don't forget to private message me on LinkedIn if you would like more information about behind the brand. This is the What We Do video. You'll find it on YouTube as well. Again, $5,000. Great video, don't get me wrong, but not ideal for social media. Like, you don't want to tell everyone everything on social media. What you want to do is give them small snippets of information without giving them all the information. Because if you give them all the information, they don't need to want to know more. You want them to want to know more. Curiosity is one of the most powerful tools that you can use on social media. And then you want to get a content calendar. Content calendar is a pretty simple thing. Right, all it means is you're planning your content in advance. I suggest planning a month in advance. And so you just map out your content a bit like this. Best time to post it is, is post in the morning where your audience is. Because if people are on LinkedIn, generally during the day, during the week, so if you post in the morning, it gives it them all day to engage with your content. Whereas if you post at night, most people are gonna be asleep after you posted it. And it's really important that you get engagement fast on your content. And the first 15 minutes is really important. The first hour is really important. You know, so we're gonna be checking on your content every 30 minutes or so throughout the day 
um, but especially at the start. So you're responding to comments quickly. LinkedIn love that when you respond to comments quickly when you've just posted something. And you'll probably find that if the you know content generally has a lifespan of two or three days, sometimes if it's really good, as long as a week. Um, so you just be keeping an eye on it. By the time it's died down, you want to be putting your next post up. So you're always at the top of the news feed. So you know, two, three days, put your next post up. Two, three days, put your next post up. Um, but you want to be posting during the week, Tuesday to Wednesday, Thursday are the best days to post on LinkedIn. Post in the morning where your audience is. So if your audience is local, that means in the morning where you are. If, if, if you're in Perth and your audience is in the US, then you probably need to post in the evening you know, in Perth. So just think about where your audience is, not so much where you are. Um, and then plan your content in advance. <clears throat> so you see, this is just an example from one of our clients. The yellow uh, boxes represent a video post. The blue boxes represent an image post. And then you'll see the tab to, towards the bottom of that spreadsheet. Uh, we've got calendar and we've got post. So if you go to the post section, you'll see video one, the caption and the link to the video. So it's just all mapped out in advance. So again, coming back to being focused and not unfocused, so being proactive with your content. Okay, now I'm going to talk a little bit about the pillar content strategy. This is a strategy that I developed from a chap in America called Gary Vaynerchuk. Gary V, let me know in the chat if you know who Gary V is. Um, but you create one piece of pillar content. It could be a, a, a 30 to 40 minute interview with behind the brand. That's how we do it. I interview the clients, ask them questions that I know will create engaging content. Um, and then we create micro content from that interview. So every 30, 40 minutes, turned into one to two minute videos. You can do the same thing with live talks, with webinars like this. Um, any long form piece of content can be, you know, on the basis of content's engaging, should be able to be edited down into micro content. And what you wanna do is post that content, plan that content like I showed you in the content calendar, post it over the course of two or three months, and then measure the results and see what content your audience is most engaged with. Because the stuff that my audience is going to be engaged with is not necessarily going to be the same as what your audience is engaged with. So you want to find out from your audience what kind of content they want to hear more of. So the next time you create a pillar piece of content, you're optimizing it to the user. Okay, so if you want more information on behind the brand, um, I recommend sending me a message. Profile optimization, we do write LinkedIn profiles and we do do one-on coaching. Please do direct message me on LinkedIn, uh, Nathaniel Bibby or, or Instagram. If you go to nathanielbibby.com, you'll also find a bunch of online training courses. Um, your social media bootcamp is one of them. Linked Insider 2.0 is a great one. That's really reasonable price. It's got a lot of... Um, LinkedIn uh, training in there. I've basically taken the training that I do for corporates, which goes over the course of uh, uh, half a day, and I've put it all into videos and put it on um, online. So if you want to check out LinkedIn Insider, you can access that for a fraction of a cost of what it costs corporates to um, to get involved in that as well. Okay. If anyone re recognizes this dude, Mel Fisher, he he was the guy that was hunting um, hunting gold under the ocean, and he found it after thirty five years. I can't remember can't remember exactly the the wreck that he was going after, um, but there is treasure on LinkedIn. You can find it. it is worth it. Please stick in there. Um, just quickly, guys, on the profile optimization side of things. Um, I just want to talk to you a little bit about how to optimize your LinkedIn profile before I wrap up with you today. Um, I'm just going to stop sharing my screen and talk directly to you here. So with your LinkedIn profile, this is where people are going to be landing, whether you're posting content, whether you're setting connection requests, whether people are Googling your name, you know, people will Google your name, they'll probably end up on your LinkedIn profile. You want to make sure that first of all, it's visible. Make sure your link, LinkedIn profile is visible. Make sure your headline communicates your value proposition to your audience. A lot of people write their LinkedIn profile like a resume. And if you're using it to get more customers, it's really important that you write it for your customer. So tell people the value proposition. Make sure it's really clear what you do, the problem you solve, and space it out so it's really easy to read on a mobile device. Use bullet points for your services. And then what you want to do at the end of the about section, the about section is where you want to personalize your stuff and make it like first person. You want to tell people what to do next, whether it's to visit your website, to give you a call, send you an email. 
just guide people through the process, the same principles that we use on conversion-based web design to get people to fill out a form or to, to make a phone call, we want to use on your LinkedIn profile as well. So make sure you're writing in customer-centric language and you want to optimize it for certain keywords that people might be searching for when they're looking for what you do on LinkedIn. It's not going to be relevant to all industries, but if you're in professional services, if you're an accountant, if you're in financial services, people will be searching for what you do on LinkedIn. And if you just optimize it for a few keywords, you'll be showing up at the top and you won't miss out on the opportunity when people are looking for what you do, especially people that are already in your network. You know, if you do a search, the first people you see are your first degree connections. You want to make sure you're not missing out on referral opportunities like that. So your headline's really important. Make sure that you've got a clear headshot. The closer to your eyes, the better. People will connect with your eyes when they're scrolling through profiles in the newsfeed. Make sure your post your profile on LinkedIn is also visible to the public. Make use of the background banner space. Optimize the about section. You want to customize your LinkedIn URL. I know this is a lot of information. Um, but those are the main things. If you want to get a checklist of all the things that you need to do on your LinkedIn profile to optimize it effectively, you want to go to uh, my website, bbconsultinggroup.com. I'm just going to type it in the chat here, bbconsultinggroup.com.au and then just go to the resources section. I'm just going to show that on the screen to you there. There we go. bbconsultinggroup.com.au. Go to the resources section. You'll find a profile optimization checklist. If you would like me and my team to optimize and copyright your profile for you, uh, we do offer that as a service. Please private message me either on LinkedIn at Nathaniel Bibby or if you're on Instagram. This is my Instagram handle for you here. I'm dropping this in the chat. Let's get this over to you. Here we go, Instagram, Nat Bibby. All right, that's where you can find me on Instagram. Private message me if you'd like any more information on Behind the Brand or our LinkedIn profile optimization services or any of the other things we've discussed today. Guys, I hope that was valuable. Let me know in the comments if you got value. If you're watching the replay, do drop your questions in the chat. I'll be checking on the comments throughout the week. And I hope you have a fantastic week in business. I'm going to see you next week here on Monday Night Live for more social media tips, tactics, and strategies. Have a fantastic week in business, guys, and good evening.